Well, everyone, it finally happened. The day that many of us have been waiting for since 2015 has arrived. This morning, I opened the YouTube app and was super excited to see a trailer for a new Batman Arkham game on my feed. Batman Arkham Shadow. I hit play wondering, am I dreaming? This feels too good to be true. Spoiler alert. Yep. The game is a VR exclusive, which isn't inherently a bad thing, but it does feel underwhelming. On one hand, it's really exciting that we're getting a new entry in the Arkham series. There's already some interesting lore details that can be pointed out in the trailer. Initially, I thought this would be a game that takes place between Arkham Knight and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, where we'd be playing as the Nightmare Batman. Upon closer inspection, it seems that it's an Arkham Origins sequel. It seems Roger Craig Smith is coming back to voice the character again. It looks like Ratcatcher could be the main villain. So those are all things that people are getting interested in and excited about. It is a new story in this continuity. I'm also expecting this to be a marked improvement over 2016's Batman Arkham VR, which felt a little bit gimmicky. It kind of felt like Warner Brothers trying to cash in on VR, which was still kind of in its infancy when it came to modern gaming. Batman Arkham Shadow, on the other hand, is developed by the team behind Iron Man VR, which many people have told me was good. I didn't experience it myself, but I heard that it had a pretty decent story and some pretty fun gameplay mechanics to carry it. One of the weakest aspects of Batman Arkham VR was the fact that there was really almost nothing to do. It was really cool to look around Rocksteady's world that they'd created, it was cool to see Gotham in virtual reality, but there was no combat, there was no stealth, there was no traversal, and those are all things I could see making their debut in Batman Arkham Shadow. So I don't really see this being an entry in the Arkhamverse that's worth just writing off. I do think it could have a cool story. It could have some interesting new mechanics that lend themselves better to VR. However, I'm not going to fool myself. This isn't going to be a game as ambitious as something like Batman Arkham Knight. This isn't going to scratch that itch of playing as Batman in an open world map where you go and complete side missions and there's a cool main story to follow and it takes 12 hours to complete. I personally don't think there's any way that you could bring the free flow combat system to VR. It just doesn't seem like it would fit. VR is a really cool technology that has lended itself great to things like horror games, and you could tell a great Batman story in that style, but trying to translate an action-adventure game to VR seems a lot harder. Still, I do think that this has a lot of potential, and I think if it was releasing alongside a full console-based Arkham game, there would be a lot of interest in checking it out. The problem is that we've been waiting nearly 10 years for a new Arkham game, and this being the next step, again, feels underwhelming. It would be like Ubisoft putting the Assassin's Creed franchise on hiatus, just not releasing a game for a decade, and then suddenly, a trailer pops up on YouTube saying, hey, new Assassin's Creed game is coming out later this year, check out the trailer, and it's a Telltale game. It's like, yeah, that could still be cool, it would still have its fans, but it's not doing what the IP is known for, and the vast majority of fans of that IP would be disappointed that it wasn't a return to form in the way they expected. Similarly, on this side of things, DC has been in a really weird stage since Arkham Knight in 2015, where we've gotten some cool games, we've gotten Injustice 2, we got Batman the Telltale series, and we've also gotten some really divisive games like Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice, League where the community is really torn, and a new Arkham game felt like the unifying step that Warner Brothers could always take. A new Batman Arkham game always felt like the get-out-of-jail-free card that Warner Brothers had at their disposal that could very quickly regain any lost confidence by their fans, because it's a winning formula. Insomniac has been seeing similar success with their Spider-Man games to bring back the Arkham series 10 years after Arkham Knight and reveal a brand new entry would be a really great move, and so for them to sort of halfway do that feels like another tone-deaf step. Again, the fact that we're getting anything new in terms of Batman Arkham gets me excited. I'm glad that we're getting this. However, it just doesn't seem like they're committing all the way to bringing this franchise back. I think many Arkham fans are feeling a little bit frustrated because now Arkham is a logo that's being slapped on ports to Switch that don't completely work, or Return to Arkham, a remaster that in many cases looked and performed worse than the original. The Arkhamverse banner was heavily used to promote Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is a heavily monetized live service shooter game. It's not really an Arkham game, which is fine, but to try and use the reputation that Arkham has to get more people to buy it feels frustrating. It's also concerning that Warner Brothers doesn't seem to get the message, even though consumers are showing them what they want with their wallets. 
that's what companies usually respond to. But I've listened to the earnings calls where David Zaslov and co will sit and say, yeah, Hogwarts Legacy, our single player open world game was an unprecedented success and Suicide Squad, our big live service multiplayer shooter game just didn't work. We're gonna make more live service shooter games. And yes, Warner Brothers owns these characters. They can do what they want with them. That's fine. It just feels really odd to have this huge fan base and community that would support projects like a single player Superman game, another Batman Arkham game, a Flash game, and to act as if that community just doesn't exist or isn't big enough to get the company money. But at the same time, to give credit where credit's due, I didn't know if Warner Brothers would ever really bring Batman Arkham back. Since Arkham Knight, they've seemed really disinterested in creating anything new for that franchise. They pumped out Return to Arkham, which seemed pretty half-baked, and they recently did a Switch re-release, which also felt pretty half-baked. In terms of a new game, they've always kind of sidestepped the question, and they've always outright avoided questions about Arkham Origins getting a remaster or a sequel. And I do think Batman Arkham Shadow opens the door for that. That's a door that many of us, I think, just assumed was indefinitely closed. So even though Batman Arkham Shadow may feel like a somewhat underwhelming experience, it's important to keep in mind that this could pave the way for future Batman Arkham projects, whether it's an Arkham Asylum remake, an Arkham Origins remaster, or an outright Arkham Origins sequel, or maybe a Batman Beyond game set in the Arkhamverse. So there definitely is a silver lining here. I'm not going to write off Batman Arkham Shadow. I think it could be cool. I think it could be a cool VR experience. I'm interested to see it at Summer Games Fest. I think I'm a little bit more interested to see what could happen after Batman Arkham Shadow. It seems like Warner Brothers is potentially open to telling more stories during the Roger Craig Smith era of the Batman Arkham IP. So we could see more content down the line. I hope we do. I think it's a great series. I also think there's a lot of potential to build off of what Rocksteady did with their trilogy. You could make a whole game concentrated on Batman and Robin working together and really work on fleshing out the dual play system. They could do a Batman Beyond game in the Arkhamverse where you really overhaul all of the gadgets and mechanics to feel more futuristic and take them to the next step. There's a lot of stories that would be really interesting to experience through the Arkham lens. For example, a death in the family could be explored as a game set between Arkham Origins and Arkham Asylum. So there is potential. However, it is disappointing that this first step feels somewhat underwhelming. But those are my thoughts on Batman Arkham Shadow. Please be sure to leave yours in the comments below and let me know what would you like to see after Batman Arkham Shadow? What do you think the next step of the Arkhamverse should be? What other DC heroes should get games besides just Batman? man. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more content planned in the coming weeks, and we will see you guys in the next one.